Let's move on to question number three. How do I get more steam power? Gabriel, you just, want to attack that one? Just wait a minute. <laughs> You'll have more steam power if you just wait a minute. Seriously. Everyone starts with some. And so it doesn't matter who you are. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to make a single post. You just wait a minute and you'll have more. So <laughs> well, it's maybe weird, you right? Have, maybe you have, if you have big steam, uh, steam power holdings, you will. But for those of us who are still small, I mean, yeah, we gain a little bit. But. Exactly. You, you have more now than you did a few <laughs> seconds ago. I mean, yeah. you, you really have to sit and let that sink in. It, like, you don't have to do a single goddamn thing. You have more. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> although, so that, although, as we learned from FairSim in the last episode, um, if you don't stick with the content creation, if you don't keep putting new content in over time, your relative share of the network uh, you know, is going to decline. Over time, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Steam power, though, is protected from the inflation, though. But, I mean, obviously, having a fraction of a cent more is not going to, you know, get you all jazzed in the morning, right? So you do have to kind of add enough to it. I mean, the point at which somebody considers it useful or inspiring or enough to make you happy is different from person to person. For someone, it might be, hey, I have enough to pay my rent each month. That's awesome. Or maybe it's even just enough to buy, you know, maybe a coffee every day or something. You know, there's a certain point at which it goes, wow, that's really cool for each person. And once you kind of get to that point, then it kind of pushes you along further. So really, you just have to kind of decide for yourself where that point is and try to get there as quickly and efficiently as possible. <laughs> Stephen, what do you think? What's the, uh, what's the best way to get more steam power? Uh, again, I'll agree with Gabriel on this. You can wait. However, if you want to... Oh, what's the best way? What's the best, best way? way? Make yes. good content. Be yes. a freaking badass and recognize that you as an individual, I don't really care who you are. This is to everybody. You as an individual have something that is unique to anything else that anybody else has seen. You may not recognize that you know this, but you have a very highly unique perspective that somebody somewhere will find valuable. I promise somebody somewhere will find it valuable. And the more you just put out this content, this authenticity of you out into the Steam It platform, and the more your name gets seen, just they'll, they'll be like Gabriel, your past posts where there's, Sense zeros across the board like mine and then with a spotty like a hundred two hundred dollar post and then you start pumping out these two three hundred four hundred dollar posts regularly because people recognize that that's a quality name you've branded yourself um but you you have that within you and it's your unique perspective so i recommend just putting it down onto paper, onto a media platform in any capacity, because it doesn't do you any good being in your head. Oh, sorry about that. And you'd be really shocked how you'd be rewarded. But if you want the easier way and you're still skeptical, freaking just upvote. Over a period of time, you're going to have more money just because you recognized content than if you didn't recognize content. But you know, the, the curation thing has become basically the dominion of Wales now. Because now with the 30 minute uh, voting window, you know, we're, we're now, before it was a race to see who could upvote first, you know, and the bots were winning that. But now um, with the 30 minute window after a post where you share the curation reward with the author, and you know, the, the first to post still gets the highest reward, but you know, if you po if you upvote immediately, you sh the author gets ninety nine point nine four percent of your uh, curation reward. You know, so um, you know I was reading some analysis. I don't remember ex who exactly was saying this. It might have been on a uh, Dan the Man thread, but uh, basically, there's no point uh, really to to anybody but whales trying to make money from curation. You'll still make a little bit. It doesn't hurt. You know, but the advice, the advice from the high powered uh, users that I saw there was, you know, you should just vote for stuff you like and don't worry about trying to earn from curation. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
when you're creating content, people like to see you engaged. They like to think that they know you. They like to think that they have a feel for who you are and what you're interested in and that you care. So if, you know, if you're just posting and you're not doing any curation, you get less of that value. Whereas if they see you mingling and if they see you upvoting things and they see you leaving comments and stuff, then they're more, they feel like you're more engaged and they're more likely to follow you. So I posted or I found a really relevant um, thread. It's actually one of the more higher voted threads right now. I think it's, uh, it's actually number five on the trending. Um, it's a post by Dragon Slayer 109. It's got some great stuff I've noticed. Uh, how steam and technology and principles can and will become the foundation of the future of management and companies. And they, uh, it goes into really good depth about the purpose and function of the steam at platform in relation to companies and whales and stuff like that. And it talks about how dolphins are the uh, kind of the guiders, the whales are the ones really calling the shots and saying, this is what kind of value is, uh, considerable and then the, uh, you know you've got people who like yourself you would be I guess an upper management big minnow uh, maybe dolphin I'm not sure how the numbers are translated quite yet um, but between those two things they talk about the benefit uh, how whales and dolphins are the curation awards like you were just bringing up and that mm -hmm. uh, there's a natural uh, progression in producing content that gets you from that small minnow to that big minnow and then that name will earn you that reputation where people are like oh he knows what he's talking about and they'll just throw their vote at you because they're already somebody they can relate to and they typically will like your content over and over again and that'll just get you into that dolphin part and, and it'll be less worth your time uh, producing content as it would be to finding other people and other content producers and bringing them together to bring and add more value and recognize them. So there's like this kind of natural management of value that occurs in content production that occurs through this um, platform, at least according to the article. And I think well, and also kind of like with a company, you'll have certain managers who have different philosophies about how things should be managed. So like with whales, for instance, we have some like uh, Ned maybe who kind of retains most of his voting power and uses it in really big ways. Like when something that he really likes comes along, he votes it up and his vote has a lot of power and it makes a big splash. Whereas someone else like maybe Smooth or Bernie Sanders, they'll they actually have teams of smaller people like uh, dolphins or, or whatever that they actually have helped them to find gems that are not being seen, right? So. They'll, they'll kind of make it their full-time job to scour, steam it, and find people that haven't been really appreciated yet. And, and th so the whales are kind of making a conscious effort to spread themselves as thin as possible to encourage as many newcomers as possible because they know that that's where the long-term value comes from is in encouraging these quality content creators. Yeah, so just to answer the, the question raised, and then I want to get, get back to the topic you, you, you guys are on. But uh, how else to earn steam power is, uh, you know, create content creation primarily, especially for new people, but also mining. And you can also, uh, in your wallet on steamit.com, uh, under the little arrow next to your steam power total, you can invest Bitcoin directly into uh, steam power it's really easy if you want not not that i'm recommending that of course you know everybody has to make their own investment decisions but on the topic of this article that you uh raised Stephen, it it um it reminds me of some other articles like a, it's like a genre of article on steam it where you try you try you posit that there is a steam it philosophy you know oh, right there's something linking us yeah, you try to relate it to things like in the, the corporate world or, or in some, some normal, ordinary thing that normal, ordinary people deal with, you know. And I just, uh, you know, I think Dragon Slayer has some, 109 has some interesting content, but I, 
I, just, I hate this approach because it's like, you know, steam it is like, you know, when you get up in the morning and, uh, you know, you have your coffee and that's the steam power, you know, and you have your bagel and that's your, your steam dollars, you know, and, ah, uh, it's like, ah, oh, that's so stupid. Like, it makes me just think like people haven't really don't have that much to say. Like they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. But, uh, and also there's this thing about like, and that's emblematic of this whole thing where people think, <laughs> like I've been on the uh, the steam uh, on some some steam at that chat, and people are like you know we got to get the regular people in here, man. Like we got to figure out we got to put up billboards and shit, you know. And I'm like, ah, you know, like come on, let's think freaking strategically here, all right. Number one, all right. I hate to bring up crossing the the chasm again, but freaking crossing the chasm, okay? <laughs> people, you got to bring in now are technology th enthusiasts and visionary leaders, okay? You know, and I was, I was talking with some guy, and he was like, well, I'm talking to my pastor, and he's going to bring the whole church in. I was like, well, your pastor, you know, he was, because he was, he said, well, I was saying that we should only bring in tech leaders, you know? And I was like, okay. And he was saying, we don't need tech leaders. We need pastors, regular people. I said, well, your regular people, your neighbors, your grandma, your pastor, who are the, when they see steam it, and they're like, what the hell is this? Who are they going to talk to? Who are they going to check up on? What website are they going to go to to see if anybody says that Steam it is okay, technologically trustworthy, et cetera, you know? And that's, that's how the whole crossing the chasm thing works. Like conservative, regular people, you know, with corporate jobs and whatnot, they, they're, they're not suddenly going to be like, oh, I should be an early adopter, you know? No. They're, they're going to be like, well, is CNN talking about it? Uh, what does my pastor think? How about the guy who fixes my computer? You know, what about my older brother who's a bit of a tech geek? You know, like, and so until you get the technology enthusiasts and the visionary leaders and stuff, you know, you're not, you're just wasting your time and your money. And frankly, when you bring those, those people that I'm mentioning, they're going to automatically, they're going to do your job for you. They're going to bring all those other people in, you know? So just a little rant there. No, I, I think a lot of people, um, they're, like you said, they're scratching the service, but they're, I, I, for me, it's hard. I can get people interested. I can, I can talk like I'm an interesting person, but, and, and I can catch people's attention, but I've noticed that until I told them about the success of our first podcast and some, and my own personal article, they were just like, Sounds cool. And, you know, it's a, it's a show me the money type of, de a type of thing. And when, you know, I bring up the numbers, they're like, no fucking way. And I was like, yeah, that was a legit thing. I just threw up something that I wrote a couple of years ago. You know, throw up your college papers and you'll be shocked to get 50 bucks out of a college paper that you wrote. You, you know, you've got to be on it. No, oh, dude, I, I, there's so many things, college material right now, that would blow some of the content out of the water. That's, That's making kind of embarrassing. No, oh, my, uh, my buddy brought up a really good point. He's a guy that, uh, he's, he's brilliant. He's, I, I really respect the dude. He's working on a very big introduction for the platform. Uh, he's, he is a philosopher who uh, really, really relates to Ayn Rand on a lot of levels. So he's really tries to thoroughly understand objectivism and he's going in with this introductory post of how steam it is an objectivist platform and how the collectivists have kind of uh have kind of uh, attacked it so yeah no it's 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 you know it's that philosophy that's still trying to be worked out but uh i think there's a i think that that philosophy is really just something that does need to be hammered out because the people that don't ap apply it I've seen are the ones who don't see the value in this. But yeah, you know, if I threw up, like I did a really pretty good thesis in, for my uh, bachelor's degree, but if I were to pull that out and throw that up on steam it and make 500 bucks, like I wouldn't tell anybody because that would be bad for steam it, you know, do you understand? Yeah. I just Throw up any old, you know, throw up pictures of like your dirty tube socks, man. You'll make 50 bucks easy. You know, like, what the heck? That People, doesn't, who is that supposed to attract? Uh, nobody. Okay, to so, go, oh, wow. That sounds like quality. You, you know? know, 
it, it, it ensure, in my opinion, it ensures that the people uh, recognize that they've got quality content already existing in their lives that beats the shit out of some of the stuff that is making money. So it's kind of a call for content creators uh, and quality content creators to start putting their shit up. Stop. It's also a call to recognize that a lot of the things that you might want to do anyway can easily be worked in such a way that they constitute good content. Like maybe your job takes you to a foreign country for some reason or whatever. You can make a post out of that. You can bring your camera phone with you. You can shoot interviews with interesting people along the way. And, you know, it kind of changes your mind so that you start thinking more like, where is there value in my life right now? Where can I find value? How can I live in such a way that might be interesting to others? Well, that, that would be interesting content, you know? Right. That, that, that would be something more than just like taking a picture of your dirty tube socks and throwing it up there, you know? That, that, that's, serious, that's serious content, you know? <sighs> Which sounds uh, like- I, One of the reasons why Gabriel tried to, was like, uh, sent me a message like two months before I actually started using this. He's like, dude, just check out Steam. It looks like <laughs> to sell your fiction. And I, I looked at it and all the content was like junk. And I was like, dude, ch-, you know? And so like, you know, so I was like, you know, screw this. And uh, that, that, was pro- that was a lack of foresight on my part. But at the same time, like, it, other people are going to have that same reaction, you know? Oh, so, that- like, I think we have to aspire to something a little higher than just, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel and throwing up your old college papers, you know? I mean, I think that, <clears throat> I mean, your old college papers, it's at a higher level content than a lot of the existing stuff i mean i'm just saying it's people that are sitting yeah, but that's down that's that. a bad that's a bad like that if if that's true if we accept that's true that's an indictment of the steam and system right now uh i mean i don't think it's a secret that we're lacking good content i mean we've got some but it's loaded with bullshit and we don't need to we don't need thank to you. Fuck, thank yeah, you thank yeah, you we don't need to like coddle the balls of people and say oh no your content's good keep doing what you're doing no we want you guys fucking run out of the ground by people who know what they're doing so you can observe how to make good content and then you can be a content creator stop mm. posting up your shitty stuff and put and flooding the good content i mean that is the job of the dolphins to find those hidden gems but we want those we want those to fucking all be gems they can't all be gems, but we want more content creators. And we've got these people who are not content creators who are trying to make money. And then you've got content creators who are making money. And then the people finding their way in between. Um, mm. And we want to attract more content creators so that we can set a good example uh, for what is what constitutes good content as opposed to just a collectivist oh somebody i like posted something silly 300 bucks and that (laughs) that right there is what currently is uh interrupting the integrity of the system and that's or even worse even worse it was an automatic bot upvote you know from a dolphin or a whale you know like the they have these bots I, I've been reading about, you know, we, we mentioned as well, like, they're just like, oh, I like this guy. I'm going to upvote everything he did, you know? And it's their strategy to earn from curation, but then, you know, it's like now curation is on autopilot. And so where, you know, like quality, okay, where did it go? Where did the concern for quality go, you know? And I think as we adopt, or as more and more dolphins, whales adopt the platform and find out how their niche is supposed to make money and, you know, add value to this uh, platform. I think that's where we'll start actually getting whales that are recognized content. Uh, they, they are content recognizers. They're looking for quality and they are going out of their way to recognize those and establish themselves as a quality recognizer, not just trying to uh, they just make as much money as possible by upvoting everything because that again is not in the their interest as a user whale and investor of the platform it's not in their interest to make as much money without actually having value they uh, the investors of this platform the whales they're value minded people and that's a totally different mindset than money making people mm. 
So, uh, Gabriel, what do you think about the whole like whale bots programmatic, programmatically uploading, uh, sorry, upvoting certain people? You know, some people might look at it as the whales are being patrons to these people. And other people I might look would at agree it with that. As tribalism, but what do you think? I would agree with that. I, I proposed this a few months back that one of the many platforms that could be emulated or copied or, or whatever is Patreon. They've, they've been doing a really good job for providing a way for artists to make money for their work. Because, I mean, often when you're on YouTube or something and you find somebody that you like, you'll like their video and you might subscribe to them. But, I mean, they're not making any money off that. Or if they ask you specifically in a certain video, please donate. Maybe you will that one time. But then you go on and you do other stuff and that's the only money they ever see from you. So what Patreon has done is they've automated that, that whole process where you don't just donate one time, you sign up so that you're automatically charged a certain amount, however much you want, every time they create new content. So I see the whale bots as being sort of like Steemit's answer to that mechanism where if someone recognizes a creator that they like that consistently creates good quality content, and they don't want to have to keep their eyeball on them the whole time. They can just program their bot to automatically upvote their stuff. Kind of like paying a, a subscription fee. Subscription fee, exactly. But it's a voluntary subscription fee. Based that can be canceled at any time, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's the right model. But again, it's that, that voluntary platform that uh, some whales are taking ahead or are, are, are making the go ahead and actually doing it. And then there's other people trying to do their own. Uh, right. And honestly, most people don't have the technical expertise to create their own bots to program them. So it would be cool if somebody came out with some kind of a platform that made that process more accessible, you know, mm. that's only a matter of time. Hey guys, another uh, yeah. big money idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I like the idea in general of whales, you know, being uh, like as patrons, but I also, uh, you know, it also concerns me that it's, you know, so right now those whale upvotes are what are building the next generation of high uh, steam power users, you know, so yeah, if it's on autopilot, is that really going to end up the way that they want it? I would say that if you put it on autopilot and then just leave it alone and don't ever check on it, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> but as long as you're kind of keeping an eye on the people that you're patronizing, then it's probably fine. Um, I, I kind of want to bring up that this isn't a, a very different dynamic than what currently exists in the real world where there's content creators trying to find investors uh, and it's just a different platform for that. Um, but it's the same, it's the same loops. You're jumping through the same hoops to get eyes on you for your investors. Um, because, you know, there's always those people that have lots of money and lots of influence that you're just like, Hey, I want you to invest in my idea. Um, and that, that's kind of what the whales are are there those investors who are just like i'm going to keep you around for a little while as long as you keep pumping up good content you keep doing it long enough maybe one day you'll be a whale like somebody in my ancient family was and you know like i, I mean no that's actually not the thing with a uh, bitcoin or with a uh, crypto in general a lot of these people are not super old money they're they're actual hard-working individuals that are trying to build something new which is Again, different how you deal with a lot of money without it being technically that old money. Mm -hmm. Some of it is old money. Some of them are just like investors in property and real estate uh, that are just transferring it over to Bitcoin or to crypto in general. All right. So is, uh, you know, I think we've covered our topic today. You know, what is uh, steam power? Why it matters? You know, how you can use it, how you can get it. Is there anything you guys want to add on this topic or any other uh, topic? Ooh, I think this was a really good episode. Uh, I think we covered a lot of different angles that I think will, again, be covered in the future. It's such a big topic. Uh, but, huh? 
All right, then. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, it's been a, an interesting show. Uh, I've been here with Gabriel Shear at Pied Piper, Stephen Polsky at Sneaky Squirrel. I'm George Donnelly at George Donnelly. We are the Steam Smart Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and please do check us out at the Steam Smart Podcast channel on uh, steamit.chat. Have a great day, and talk to you again soon.